So welcome back to another episode of Food Finders. I'm Seth and guess who we have back in the house? I'm so happy to be back. <laughs> yes, because we have a very special theme today. Christmas! No, it's not. No, I mean, you don't have to guess, right? So rather than the usual boring pineapple tarts and love letters, we're going to try a huge variety of Chinese New Year snacks. So if you're looking to upgrade your Chinese New Year this year, Stay tuned. So what we have in front of us is Pineapple Tarts Singapore. It's a local brand. And guess what they sell? Pineapple Tarts. <laughs> they have four flavours today. The original Pineapple Tart, Mala, Salted Egg and Cheese. I'm gonna guess this one's Mala, the reddest looking one. Yep. <coughs> definitely, <laughs> definitely Mala. <coughs> We're gonna try the original first. What I expect in a Pineapple Tart mm. is that it needs to be very crumbly. Yeah. Once it's in your mouth, it needs to like melt together. Mm -hmm. Along with the filling that's not too sweet. Okay. I like I like the balance between like pastry and the pineapple filling. It melts in your mouth. It is very nice. As I say, the filling is not too sweet. Oh. That's why you can continue eating yeah. more. Uh, Shall we leave mala for the last one? Yep, most probably because you won't taste anything else after this. Let's try salted egg. It has a very faint salted egg. Scent. Yeah, a bit light. Can't really taste the salted egg. Yeah. I think the salted egg is baked into the pastry itself mm. rather than in the filling. Yeah, you have to chew it for a little bit mm. for the flavours to come out. Not too bad. Yep. Yeah, it's not a salted egg bomb. Not it's not like, you know, it's gonna flow out or anything. Cheese? Okay. It smells very cheesy. It's not bad. The flavours are not too overpowering. Mm. It's very palatable. Yeah, the cheese and the, and the pastry goes a lot better. Blends together quite well. Okay, for the finale. This will be the talker of your Chinese New Year visitations. Ah, ah boy, ah. Hey, when are you getting married? Nah, auntie mala. <laughs> ah, yeah. I'm not sure if I want to eat the whole thing. You can really smell like the, the, the mala spice. I expected it to be stronger. Yeah. It's not very la, but the ma scent is very there. Oh, like, there's a bit of spice coming through. It's like a mala xiao la. Okay, but after chewing a while, right, the heat kicks in. It's like quite young, you know? I don't really taste that much pineapple because I feel like it's mm. overpowered by the mala. I still like it because there is a very faint, sweet aftertaste. Okay, so there's a surprise flavor today. There is a spicy challenge. Ugh. Do you want to try it? <laughs> Why? Why not? Because <laughs> who doesn't want diarrhea? It's not a very smart move after we just had the mala, you get what I mean? But you know what? Let's. This go sounds for it. more powerful than yeah, the mala. We're doing it for you. You know what I thought <gasps> of the first moment? <laughs> it, I mean, it smells like the mala, but like ta la, you know. I think we should split it. No, I love the bigger bite for you. Okay, like the initial is okay. Mm -mm. About 10 seconds in, then you start sweating. I can't really taste any pineapple at this stage. <laughs> if you want to play a game during Chinese New Year to spice things up, buy this. It's really quite spicy. Okay, so ratings time. I would rate this 4 out of 5. I can actually see myself eating more of the pineapple tarts because it's not very gelat. Uh, I would go with a 3.5. My favourite is probably the cheese one. A huge reason why I gave 4 out of 5 is also because of the novelty. Like, it's fun. So if you want to have a challenge during Chinese New Year with your yeah, relatives, right, right. you can. So next up, we have this durian roll from Sunny Hills, a super famous and popular brand from Taiwan, but mostly for their pineapple tarts. Uh, but today, we are going to try the D24 durian cigar roll. They source their produce locally in Taiwan. Yep. Shall we open the box and see what's inside? It has 20 pieces of the uh, D24 durian roll and it's $29. Okay, it's a very atas packaging. It's just that you can't open it in the buses in Singapore or like on the trains and stuff. It smells like durian. Okay, but it's not like uh, you open and like, oh, the whole room smells like durian. You know how you always have love letters? So yeah, that's yeah, my yeah. comparison right now. Yeah. The typical love letters that we have in Singapore, the colours are just very one-dimensional. But this one, we can see like the toasted ages and stuff. I'm very happy with the aftertaste. There's like this wave of durian aroma that's coming up to your nose. And I like that. I'm not a typically a uh, person who like, eats a lot of durians like durian. okay. because it's very heaty. But I'm happy with this. I think the flavour is very natural. You know, sometimes you eat durian flavoured products. So this one, they use uh, real D24 durians. They don't add any artificial flavourings or additives or whichever. So you get very like natural mellow taste. It is also a conversational starter like, for sure when your relatives come over. Yeah, I don't think there's any similar product to this in Singapore at least. 
So if you really want to get people starting to talk and not be awkward in front of each other because God knows you have your sisan yi <laughs> like, and they're going to be at your house and you just want to like, you know, be polite, talk to them. This would be a very good conversation starter. But she starts like taking all the, just putting in a bag. <laughs> Times are that bad, huh? <laughs> I would give it a 4.5. I actually do like durian and I actually rarely eat durian flavoured anything else because they don't normally taste like durian. This one has a very natural durian flavour and aroma. So my ratings for uh, the D24 durian roll would be 3.5 out of 5. I am not really a particular fan of durians, but the way that this was made, I really appreciate that and it has a very nice crumbly texture to it. Alright, so up next we have the crispy kangkong with sour cream and the fortune koi fish nian gao from the deli at Goodwood Park Hotel. First glance, it's very appealing. Uh, I like the packaging. If I were to buy like a box to give someone, it's very interesting for them to open it up because it's like, it has some auspicious meaning into it. Yeah, yeah. It's like buying you a box of nian nian you yu. Presentation wise, uh, definitely looks very cute. Lah. So when I saw the rundown today and they said like crispy kangkong, I was like, what's that? I'm only worried for fried stuff. It becomes soggy after a while. But wow, the sour cream is super prominent. It does really resemble like potato, potato chips. chips. But you can tell people, hey, it's something healthy. This is very, very much lighter than a potato chip. So if I were to be chilling during Chinese New Year in front of the couch watching TV, and I happen to have this in my hand, probably this would just vanish in an instant. Yeah, this one feels like you can just sit down and like just keep eating. It's a very light cheese flavour which works very well with the sour cream. The batter is very, very thin. So it's all evenly coated, all fried, very crispy, very light. Much, much more expensive than like a pack of Lay's. <laughs> I mean, festive season, you want to impress and you want to upgrade your Chinese New Year snacks. Interesting buy. So let's move on to the koi fish. I, I really can't bear to eat it, you know. It has red bean paste inside. I like how they did the eye with like a little uh, sesame seed. Okay, let's just massacre one fish. It resembles a bit like mochi. Texture is also a little bit like mochi. Actually, it tastes more like mochi than green cow. Yeah, it's not overly sweet. I like uh, the taste of the red bean. I would prefer it a little bit more if it's not that smooth. Uh, the red bean taste for the added texture. So, I give a 4 out of 5 for Goodwood Park Hotel. It's a very good gift to give. And this is the first time in my life I tried fried kanko. I would give this a 3.5. I think plus points for me on the fried kangkong. On Neng Kao, like, nah, it's pretty average. It just looks very cute. So up next, we have O Seng Chung cookies. This is from Singapore pastry chef uh, Daniel Tay. And we have two very unique flavors here. Emperor Herbs chicken cookie. And then we have the Fat Choi fortune cookie. So the main ingredients for the Fat Choi fortune cookies Obviously, fat choy, like the black, black moss, moss. Right, right. and dried oyster. It smells very herbal. Mm, mm, mm. Like, I feel like I'm very poo. You can actually see like pieces of the uh, angelica root and the wolfberry, like, you know, they come in, in the pack itself. It looks really nice to give as a gift. Okay, let's start with the emperor herb chicken cookie. It's very, very fragrant. It's like a flavor bomb. It's very umami. Ooh, you can actually really taste all the herbs in this little bite. Very unique flavour. It's salty and sweet at the same time. It's quite ingenious actually. I really like that it's bite-sized as well. Mm. It's not too big and it's not too small, so you will always want to go back for that second bite. Yeah, actually true. The size itself, any bigger feels like it might have been a bit gelat. Okay, let's try the Fat Choi Fortune Fat Cookie. Choy. Do you smell wow. the dry oyster? It's that very oceanic um, smell that you get. La. With each bite, right, I feel like the, the oyster taste mm. gets mm. stronger. So when you're biting into it, like the flavour just oozes out. So you get very strong, savoury, concentrated notes. La. It's very unique. The flavours are very distinguishable. Yeah, I love this one actually. I'm gonna give this a 5 upon 5. Whoa. I'm very impressed by the flavours that they managed to squeeze into this little piece. This makes a very unique gift. I am giving it 4.5 out of 5. Uh, I really love the flavour, I love the packaging, everything about this product is really very interesting. Now we have goodies from Pao's Patisserie. So here we have the Bakma Floss Cookie and here we have the Hebi Kang Pastry. All these come individually in tins. Each tin would cost $18.80. Pao's Patisserie is owned by three Singaporeans. They combine French techniques with 
the Asian flavors. It looks very interesting. Okay, one thing's for sure, right? They're not being stingy with their On ingredients. The bakma, right? I know that there's a lot of like bakma bits inside, uh -huh. but because they are harder, so it's a bit more taxing uh -huh. for me to like chew through and swallow okay. it. But it does taste very nice. I actually like that they didn't just chop up the bakwa and put it into a cookie. They actually dried it and then made it into a floss. This one presents like a kind of different way of eating bakwa. Yeah, but I do, do, do love bakwa. Although like eating one piece of bakwa is like, I don't know how many bowls of rice. But <sighs> Let's move on to the heavy ham pastry. Like a lot of heavy ham. I like how flaky it is. Yeah. It's like a very, very small strudel. You know how we have the... Oh yeah, the Abiham roll, right? This is like the fusion version of mm. that. The East and the West, you come together, there's like a beautiful baby product of like okay. the heavy health pastry. There's like a slight bitterness at the back, I don't know why. Which I appreciate. Okay, my ratings for Pao's patisserie, as a whole, it would be 3 out of 5. As much as I like bakwa and stuff, I don't really appreciate the, the bakwa bits because truthfully, it was a little bit difficult for me to bite it through. But then, I like the heavy health pastry. I have a reverse opinion. I prefer the bakwa floss cookies. I would give this as a whole 3.5. The bitter taste I wasn't a fan of, but I thought the, the Bakwa Floss cookie was very innovative. Oh, but this is memorable. La. I mean, like if you have like a wide variety of snacks right in right, front right, of you, right. and then you just happen to try this, you'll be like, oh, I remember that. So we've come to the end of our Chinese New Year special for Food Finders. My favorite of the day was probably Old Seng Chung. Same, 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 same. Runner up would be the pineapple tarts from right, right. Uh, Pineapple Tart Singapore. Because I, I still feel like it's really very fun. My second favorite of the day would be the Forbidden D24 roll from Sunny Hill. So hope everyone enjoys a good Sing Yang Kuai Le. A happy Chinese New Year from all of us at Food Finders. Remember to subscribe to our channel and let us know what you would like us to try next. Until next time, bye!